All right, here's a couple of the articles about Alzheimer's and amyloid beta. In recent years, scientific community has suspected the gut microbiota plays a role in the development of the disease, which is Alzheimer's. A team now confirms the correlation in humans between an imbalance in the gut microbiota and the development of these amyloid plaques in the brain which are at the origin of Alzheimer's disease. And then it goes on that everybody else is finding it too and they're finding it has a problem with um, gut dysbiosis pr might promote it this beta aggregation, neuroinflammation, oxidative stress, insulin resistance, all kinds of pathogenesis, and Alzheimer's disease. We, this is all gut bi microbiota. I've been talking about this for years. And if they don't solve that, these long haulers that have diseases, they never get over because their, their guts still leak. Okay, my friends, I've been saying for years now, they're never going to cure anything until they cure gut dysbiosis. Now, they found a common link between several neurodegenerative diseases might finally be identified. So, they're looking at these, these different issues, and what happens is these fibers get all tangled up because they get gooey. All right, well, why do they get gooey? Because there's a problem with proteins. And the proteins are create these beta amylo uh, amyloid betas. So hold on. Bear in mind, they, they realize we now have a promising new lead, this guy Fitzpatrick says. It could point towards a common thread linking a range of neurodegenerative diseases and could open the way to new interventions. Now listen to this. Bear in mind, however, decades of research into therapies targeting the protein. It's a protein targeting the protein thought to be the main culprit in Alzheimer's disease amyloid beta have led to many failed trials and much disappointment. They have never taken into account the bacteria. I'm serious. Now remember this and remember it good. Every time they talk about proteins or enzymes or catalysts or molecular breakdown or molecular building, all done by bacteria. Good bacteria and bad bacteria. Good bacteria breaks things down so that you can digest them and absorb them and so that you can break down the bad stuff in your body, these fibers and all these dead cells and everything and break them down into particles that can flush out through your digestive system and out and urine and so forth so you get out of your body. If you can't break them down and they get gooey and fibery and nasty and they collect in usually like the lymph ducts because those are the ones that are supposed to break them down and get them out of there. So once you get lymph cancer, it's likely that you don't have the bacteria that dissolves all of these nasty little things. Now, what they found out was fragments of the mysterious protein formed narrow twisted rods or stacked into wide symmetric twisted ribbons and it was most pronounced in the cases of frontal temporal dementia. So, as you age, you, your, your bacteria in your body does change. And everything changes in your body. We, we all know that. But why does it change? I say, mostly, it appears to me that your bacteria in your body that was normally there to maintain all of this stuff is either weak or dead or or the stuff is just not made, <laughs> able to be maintained anymore. I don't know. But I can tell you what, if you don't have that bacteria in you, you're going to be sick. I don't care if you're young or old. It doesn't matter. So here's the deal. Based on these molecular structures, the researchers inferred most probable sequence of proteins, amino acid, building blocks. Now, proteins and amino acids are, are the building blocks of nature, and they are made by bacteria. When they scanned a database of known pre protein sequences, the fragments that they're finding matched a protein actually identified more than a decade ago. Ten years ago they knew about this. And this is the problem with research. You, you make papers and so forth. I'm being criticized. Oh, you don't write papers. Yeah, I wrote a ton of papers. Nobody paid a t bit of attention. Same thing uh, of attention. Same thing here. Ten years ago, in a broad hunt for genes linked with frontal 
pro dementia. Now listen to this. Here's the key right here, membranes. I've been saying this for a thousand years here now, it seems like. The protein is this 1106B, which usually sits snug in the membranes. Membrane-bound bacteria. They call it a protein. Well, the protein's only there because the bacteria is there to make the protein. This is the problem. They don't understand that the bacteria create the proteins, and they, and they create good ones and they create bad ones. The bad ones go and they might eat into your your um, collagen, the, the flappy collagen in your your um, your lungs, or the stiff collagen in your lungs, which makes it open back up. And, and then the lungs collapse. The same thing with the blood vessels. The same thing with your heart because they have to be stretchy. And so these, and they sit in these membranes. And when they're in the membranes and they take over the membranes and, and um, instead of the one that's supposed to sit snugly in that membrane, that one's dead. Somebody comes in there and says, I'm taking over here. And instead of doing the good things, I'm going to eat some of this collagen here because I live off of that. And they do. And this is, it, this is a known fact. These things eat things to live. You want to have probiotics and prebiotics. So you give these things something to eat. That's why Metamucil and fiber and all that is very good. Because then the bugs have something to eat. Otherwise, they're going to find something to eat. And they'll eat your, <laughs> your, your collagen. They like that stuff. And I think that's the key with COVID-19. It, it converts 1 to 3 or 3 to 1, one of those collagens. I believe, you know, this is just, I'm just talking off the top of my head. I saw this when they first were looking at the the autopsies of these people. And they could see that the, the collagens were just all flopped out. And that's why their lungs were collapsing. And, and they, apparently, there's a couple of different collagens in there. One of them is springy, and one of them is real flexy and floppy. And the springy one is supposed to open it back up, I believe, was the one that was getting eaten up. It's getting broken down somehow. And that's what the, this virus did. And and that's why people's lungs were failing. They were they had to be respirated to make their lungs come back open. And the same thing with their blood vessels. They're supposed to do this every time your heart goes. Dum, 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 dum. And they're springing. And they were breaking. And they were getting blood problems in their bodies. And the same thing with the heart. The hearts were given out because they're springy too. And it's because the collagens that do that springy job were being damaged and something was damaged them from that virus and was eating it up. Alright, so it's all membrane-bound bacteria. If all we need to do, and I always say all we need to do, what, what we really need to do is to map the entire body of what should be good bacteria is living in what types of membranes. Then we can put an end to this nonsense of just shooting the whole body up with all kinds of crazy chemicals to kill everything in your body. That is not the way to do it. And they have just proven this again. They took a little tiny bead, which was a hydrogel, which means it's a water soluble little BB looking thing, a little tiny ball, and it was all loaded with these interleukins and all these different, they called it a drug factory, which it was the enzymes and catalysts that the bacteria make, and then they put it into the membrane. So it was like the bacteria is doing the job, except it was the pill dissolving, and it, it just stayed there, and within six days, they were killing advanced melanomas or, or cancers in mice. Six days advanced, and um, and now they they just this is just all brand new. It's only within the actually few days, but I've been talking about this for years. They have to know where the different bacteria live, and if it's not living there, why? And is is there a way we can repopulate that place? You see, they criticize me for not writing papers. Well, look at this. This is eleven years ago. It's from twenty eleven. This is probiotics and immune health. Listen to right, right off the top. Purpose of the review. The beneficial effects of probiotics have been demonstrated in many diseases. One of the major mechanisms of the probiotics action is through the regulation of the host's immune response, which is the bacteria. This, this is probiotics. That's the, the 
That's what they're regulating is the bacteria. I mean, it's so obvious, it's unbelievable. This review highlights the recent scientific research findings that advance our understanding of probiotic regulation of the host's immune response, which is the bacteria with the potential application for disease prevention and treatment. 11 years ago, National Institute of Health. Nobody reads these things. Where do you hear this one? You see this? This is 10 years after that other article about probiotics. Probiotics in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19, current perspective and future prospects. The, it's, it's a glowing, glowing, recognition of how effective these things are. I'll read you the conclusion. Now, probiotics don't hurt you. There's nobody's been complaining about any kind of probiotic damaging you. But they do say, and this is their conclusion, evidence supports probiotics role in regulating the immune system because it's a bacteria. It's, it's, it's not regulating anything. It's the bacteria you're putting in there that's doing its job suggesting a definitive, that means an absolute certain role for probiotics in viral infections, which is the COVID. And then it goes on how good it is and how it's going to reduce the severity of COVID mortality and morbi mor morbidity and mortality. Probiotics can inhibit cytokine storms. Those are the things that cause the people to die. And, and they do it by simultaneously boosting your immune system because they are the bacteria and evading the time it takes you to adapt to this new novel disease, which is the problem. People have no, we've never seen this disease in us before, so our body has to adapt. Well, it can't adapt real quickly, so you don't want it invading you so quickly that you, you know, get overrun. So that where is where your probiotics take over and keep these invaders at bay. Now, probiotic-induced suppression of the inflammatory cytokine response may prevent both severity and occurrence of acute respiratory distress syndrome, making probiotics an attractive adjunct, which means an add-on to whatever else they're going to do for you. You know, and then it goes on and on and on. It's, it, everything's perfect. It's and then, however, there are currently no random control trials. But it says, on the other hand, circumstantial evidence has supported the presumption that probiotic supplementation decreases the severity of COVID-19 responses, including mortality. And they say here, it says here, therefore, supplementation probiotics in high-risk and severely ill patients, frontline healthcare workers, might limit the infection and flatten the curve. Have you ever heard a word about probiotics from anybody? From the government? No, absolutely not. And I've asked all kinds of doctors, they have no idea about this. This is a problem. You write all the papers you want, nobody reads them, who cares? And that's what happened. Eleven years ago, they had the same paper, basically the same story about here's how it does it, and here's how it interferes with the invasion, and all this is membrane-bound probiotics, which is the bacteria. That's all it is. All right, this is the best site I've seen yet, the Gut Microbiome and Beyond. This is by Salix Pharmaceuticals. And assimilation into clinical practice. The doctors don't understand this about microbial imbalance, irritable bowel syndrome, micro imbalance in IBD, micro imbalance in CLD, micro imbalance in diverculotus. Causes and consequences of gut is very, very good. Now, I don't come with just complaints. I come with answers and, and, and solutions. And what do we have to do? We have to map every membrane type there is in the body. There's lymph nodes, there's kidney um, surrounding, there's ones on your liver, your heart, your lungs. Everyone has, has a different type of a coating to some degree. They're going to be very similar. Now, like breast tissue is unique because if you get one breast gets involved they usually think maybe the other one might be the same with lymph nodes if lymph nodes gets involved well it could be anywhere in the body another one gets involved because they're supposed to all break down products if one doesn't have the bacteria unlikely the other ones do so these are the kind of we need to f figure out where do these colonies live 
and then we have to test each one of these membrane areas for what bacteria are in the good, healthy people and the diseased ones. And there will be different colonies of bacteria based on the chemistry that's local to that. In other words, it's near the kidney, it's going to have something that deals with salts probably. It's going to be near the um, liver, you'll have something with toxic metals, uh, you know, anyway. We would have to test these probiotics against what kind of diseases present themselves with these large colony groups of different types. You know, good or bad, who cares? We need to know what's normal and what's good and what's bad. And then you try to get yourself into the normal area. And the only way is that I can determine is to right now take probiotics orally that just flush through your system. However, at some point, if you can mem put them a, a binding technique, because that's what it is in your body right now. These bacteria that are living little bugs that know what exactly what to do and how to make the substances to kill things and break things down and break down your food so you can digest it and create mucus so that you don't get invaded and, and all kinds of things. They do all the, every single thing in your body that's done is done by bacteria, 100%. There's nothing that doesn't get taken care of unless it gets taken care of by bacteria. They are the chemists of your body. Case closed. You tell me one thing in your body that just does it accidentally. Oxygen may be converting, you know, bouncing up against the, the lung tissues, but the lung tissues are there and being supported by bacteria. So let's just go past it. Bacteria is it. Now, there's lots and lots of chemistry going on, and we need to do a lot of t testing. You know, it, it, there's a lot of things that will come up. I can't just give you a list of what we're going to have to test for right now. But we we're going to need to know about minerals and metals and gases and what different bacteria create what different types of, of actual products. I mean, they, they create the products. Bacteria break and build. That's what they do. Bacteria are breakers and builders. They are the chemists of your body. If you don't have them, if you've killed them with antibiotics, you're in trouble. Now, we really need to figure out all these things. And when we do it, then we can repopulate them where they belong and the correct ones instead of just flushing the body with all of these toxic chemicals. Because, you know, to, to kill other stuff, they're going to be toxic to some degree. Some, some things that are toxic to, to things are not at all toxic to you. But... Let's just put it this way. When they are giving you a bunch of things that kill a lot of bacteria, you got a lot of bacteria that's also going to get damaged. In most cases, if they just flood your entire body with it. What now they're doing is putting these little BBs right next to the tumors, and it's killing right away, very quickly. You know, they've been doing it in rats. It's only been in the last few days that this research has been publicized. So... Um, what you have to do is, because the bacteria right, that would live right next to that tumor would say, ooh, look, there's a tumor over there, and it would go in and attack it. But it wouldn't attack your whole body. That's the key. And when they put that little um, hydrogel in there, they call it a drug factor, and it is. It's creating the exact same enzymes as if they were living bacteria right next to that tumor. That's all they're doing, exactly what your body would do, only it would do it with the bacteria. And it would be exactly the right stuff, not just a cocktail of other things.